हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 नम हरे नम राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 नाव हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा 
रे आरे हरे आरे हार रमा हार रमा राम राम हरे आरे
हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हो कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे राम हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे डू समथिंग फेर हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Jayom Vishnupad Paramahans Parivajaka Charja Astotra Satya Sri Sriman, His Divine Grace, Esi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki. His Khan, Founder Acharya, His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jayom Vishnupad Paramahans Parivajaka Charja Astotra Satya Sri Sriman, His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj Ki. Ananta Gauri Vaishnav Indiki Nama Charya Srila Haridas Dakor Ki Sri Rupa Sanatan Bhattaragana Sri Jeeva Gopalva Das Raghunad Sad Goswami Ki Prem Sikaho Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nathananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasudhi Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopina Shamakund Radhakund Giri Govardhan Ki Vrindavan Dham Ki Navadweep Mayapur Dham Ki Shri Jagannath Puri Puru Shottam Shetra Dhamma Ki Ganga Maya Ki Jamuna Maya Ki Tulsi Maharani Ki Bhakti Devi Ki Samaveda Bhakta Rinda Ki Shri Shri Kishore Kishore Ke Shri Shri Kishore Kishore Ke Shri Shri Kishore Kishore Ke Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ke Shisi Gore Thai Kai Mithai Gore Premanande Glories to the assembled devotee All glories to the assembled devotee All glories to the assembled devotee Glories to Shri Guru And Shri Gauranga 
श्री प्रभु भाग की नमस्ते नरसिंहाय प्रहलाद लाद दाईने हिरण्य काशी पो भक्ष सिलतन खान खालाए इतो नरसिम पर तो नरसिम ओ यतो यतो यामी तो नरसिम नरसिम्हा हृदय नरसिम्हा नर सिंह मदेम शरण प्रपदे तव कर कमल बरे नधुद श्रृंग दलिता हिरण्य कशिपो तनुंगा केशवदेता हर हरि रूपा जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे केशवद्रेता नर हरि रूपा जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय नरसिंह दे जय नरसिंह दे नरसिंह दे जय नरसिंह दे हे जय भक्त पहला जय प्रहलाद महाराज भक्त पहला जय प्रहलाद महाराज नित्य गर हरि बाल हरि हरि बाल हरि बाल बोलिए श्री नरसिंह देव भगवान की जय बोलिए श्री प्रहलाद महाराज की हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 
हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो टुडे इज गोइंग टू बी येट अनदर स्पेशल कृष्ण फेस्ट we have the presence of two wonderful sanyasis who i guess between the two of them it's about close to 100 years of krishna conscious ness and service his holiness radhanath swami hari ho and his holiness chandramouli swami hari ho and both will be speaking together so very very honored and happy that it happened that they are both here uh, i also want to acknowledge the presence of mother lakshmi moni she is sitting right there lakshmi moni devi darsi so i should say that perhaps the, in the three of them there is also yadavacharya prabhu is he here yet is yadavacharya prabhu so yadavacharya prabhu jitendra prabhu he is somewhere mother lakshmi moni shila radhanath swami and is all this chandramouli swami together we're talking what close to 175 to 200 years of devotional service thank you very much is very nice to see you plus plus all of us will add the few ones and twos and fives here and there so you know that makes significance as well so thank you very much i am not going to keep my announcements long because i'd like to give both of them uh maximum time uh so from between now and 2:15 uh, will be their lecture so they'll each speak a little over half hour so i'm going to speak less just that i want you to be aware of the bad bilikan parade and rath yatra that goes with the bad bilikan parade every year by the very hard and sincere efforts put by gormani prabhu and his team let's all acknowledge that when when gormani prabhu first started at the bad bilikan parade there were hardly anyone it was a whole different scene and just consistently year after year he and the devotees have brought jagannath there it's the largest parade in north america all the major tv stations uh, broadcasted live and in fact in the past year or two years every time the float with jagannath walks by the tv broadcasters caster stop and say hey this is the hari krishnas and they give the devotees a chance to chant live on national tv so it's it's fantastic exposure and uh, gormani prabhu and his team have been putting a lot of effort each year so we encourage all of you to please support in whatever way you can either by service if he needs financial support or just being there on the day off and being part of the parade so he will have few of more flyers there is the flyers also in the lobby so please make sure that you have the details of the information write it down it will it will be on the website as well the actual program is on the 8th of august 2015 saturday and uh, it gives the idea of where the what time to assemble for the parade etc so it's on this flyer he has some copies it will be there in the lobby as well and anyone who's here for the very first time on your way out after the lecture when you're going upstairs for lunch you'll have a devotee standing there to give you a gift as a token of our appreciation that you've come here and that's our way of i guess encouraging you to please come again and get to know us better and get us let us to get you know better so there will be a devotee standing right at the door with a gift for you it's a gift of the a book written by our founder acharya his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shila prabhupad so i'm going to stop here but here's what i'd like you to do the sanyasis are going to sit here and i see ample space so please move forward philip you you have no idea how many more people will come it's going to be a packed sunday program so please move up men also please move up make sure that you don't have enough uh, empty spaces because more people will be joining us 
uh, as the hour progresses. So His Holiness Radhanath Swami, please come Maharaj, then Chandamali Maharaj is here. So today's um, topic, as you know, this is the 50th year of Srila Prabhupada's arrival to America. This is Srila Prabhupada's 50th anniversary of coming to America and it's a very significant event. And so they will be speaking on the significance of Srila Prabhupada's coming to America. His Holiness Radhanath Swami and His Holiness Chandramali Swami. Before I sing uh, Jai Radha Madhava, there's a little pastime where um, when Srila Prabhupada came and named the deities here, Kishore, Kishori, Kishori is Srimati Radharani, and Kishore is Krishna. So the temple president at that time was Govinda Prabhu and uh, he was a little concerned, not concerned but I might say a little puzzled because we hear that Krishna is always last. It's Radha, Shamsunda, Radha Madhava, Radha Gopinath, Radha Govinda. So in this particular case it was Kishore, Kishori. So, he wrote him a letter, Govinda Das, Govinda Prabhu wrote him a letter, wrote Prabhupada a letter and asked Prabhupada to explain. And Prabhupada said, in this case, we have saved the best for last. Srimati Radharani is the best. So that's the theme of our Sunday program also. Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Janavalamba Giri Vada Tahare Gopi Gopi Janavalamba Giri Vada Tahare Gopi Jisoda Nandana Raja Jama Anjana Jisoda Nandana Raja Jama Anjana Jisoda Nandana Raja Jama Anjana 
जम्मून थियरावान जामुनाथियरावान ಭರತ ಜಮ್ಮೂನ ಮಾಧವೇರ ನಮ್ಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಸ್ತಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮಕ್ತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೈವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾರಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶಧಾರಿಣೆ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿಥಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಾಸರಿ ಗೌಡ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ್ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಶೀಲ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾದ ಕೀ ಜಾಯ ಸೋ I am speaking first because it's the etiquette that you hear the essence of this talk at the end that way you remember that <laughs> So Maharaj is so kind he asked me to speak first so I agreed So I was questioning or asking what is the topic and the topic was the significance of Shila Prabhupada's coming to the western world hmm. and that's a i was thinking where to begin with that particular topic and then i remembered in uh, one purana brahma vivarta purana there's a uh, statement that's written and it's actually the words of lord shri krishna and he speaks to ganga devi herself and he says that in 5000 years my mantra upasaka uh, the person who will take the holy name my holy name all over the world will appear or one who one who is absorbed in chanting the holy name will take that mantra and bring it throughout the world so shila prabhupada's appearance in this world was actually predicted thousands of years before Prabhupada's actual appearance and uh, there are other statements so this is quite significant to understand that Prabhupada's appearance in the western world is actually ordained by the supreme personality of Godhead himself in order to bring a revolution as Prabhupada said in the minds of the conditioned souls 
to the path from understanding what is actually the real and true goal of life. So Prabhupada's contribution to what we say, the knowledge of world of the world and the religions of the world are phenomenal. And we can see in the last when we say 45 years, 50 years, and actually this is the 50th anniversary of Prabhupada's uh, appearance in United States of America, Boston 1965 and then New York. It's, there are temples everywhere in the world, practically in every country, and devotees chanting the holy names, temples are opening, uh, projects are developing, Prabhupada's books are going out, by the millions. So Prabhupada understood that his mission was an empowered mission and the Lord was empowering to do this work. There's a second prediction by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. He speaks to Narada Muni and this is written in one Shastra called um, uh, Chaitanya Mangala by Lochan Das Thakur. And there he also explains and I'll read that because I don't remember exactly what he says. He says, even if sinners reject religion and flee to foreign countries, I will send, Lord Chaitanya speaking, my more Sanapati Bhakta, my military field commander to go and deliver them. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about a almost a hundred years ago, uh, more, I mean, five hundred years ago, spoke this and it was later written down by Lochan Das Thakur. And of course, that is the second of three predictions that was there before the advent of Prabhupada's appearance in this world. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur, one of the prominent acharyas in the Vaishnav tradition, who wrote many books on the process of pure devotional service, also wrote in one newspaper called Sarjana Toshini that soon a great soul will appear on this planet in order to bring the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu everywhere. So the significance of Prabhupada's appearance was actually predicted in the scriptures by the Lord himself and by great souls who were absorbed in the process of pure devotional service. So what is the significance in our life? How do we uh, take advantage of that significance? By understanding how fortunate we are to have, to be at this particular time in history, where we get an opportunity to perform that activity which is considered to be the best of all activities. It says in human society there are four activities, but there's a fifth activity. That one is mentioned as an extra one, but the extra one is mentioned as the foremost of all the ones. And that is people perform religious activities in order to get some benefit and to elevate their material positions to a better situation. In other words, to come from a lower position to a better material position to enjoy material happiness. And that's called Dharma. And when that matures, even at the end of life, one may raise themselves to a higher planetary systems where one may enjoy material opulence and various forms of sense gratification way beyond what is available on this planet. But still, it's within the realm of the material energy and still there are the miseries of material energy. And still there is a cessation of that uh, attainment after one's pious credits fall or are, are, are no longer available. And then there is economic development and the goal of economic development is to establish some kind of material arrangements to live but economic development as it perpetuates, perpetuates itself turns into the desires to enjoy the senses. And then when the, the, li the living entity no longer finds happiness and material sense enjoyment, they look for a process to get out and that is called liberation. So these are the four, they call the purushartas, and the four fundamental activities of the conditioned souls in this material world.
But there's a fifth, it's called Purushottara Siromani. And that is the crest jewel of all the activities of the living entity. And one who takes up this becomes most fortunate. Because by taking up the process of devotional service to the Lord, one can fulfill all of one's desires perfectly and completely and it contain the highest goal of human life, which is to associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead through activities of devotion. And that's what Srila Prabhupada is offering to us. He's offering to us in a very easy and very, what we say, uh, sublime way. He's made it easy. The actual knowledge of Vedic scriptures is very difficult to understand for the conditioned souls. And the Acharyas, the great teachers, write so many books and give so many explanations on the essence of Vedic knowledge, but still, for the conditioned soul to understand it and to practice it in the day-to-day -day life is practically impossible, especially in this age we live in, the age of, what we say, activities that are geared to material, uh, when we say, success. But Prabhupada has taken the essence of all the, all the acharyas, all the teachers, which is taught by the Lord himself, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and made that process available to all. And that is simply through the process of chanting the holy names of the Lord and associating with those who chant the holy names of the Lord, one can gradually rise themselves to the stage of perfection. What is perfection? Sometimes we use that word in a very uh, undefinable way. Perfection means to be able to find the ultimate principle of happiness. As the conditioned soul, in, or any soul in any position of existence, either material or spiritual, their essence or their focus is to enjoy happiness or to experience that happiness. So bhakti, which is the innate characteristic of the living entity, nitya siddha, Krishna Prema Saru Kabunoi Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Koriyuda in the hearts of all living beings that love which is the essence of joy exists within our own hearts. And Srila Prabhupada has has taken the process because to try to approach the process without understanding the practical application of the process makes the process very hard to under to apply and very difficult. A lot of persons give up after a attempt. So the spiritual master, and in this case Srila Prabhupada, is a mercy manifestation of the Lord to teach by birth, by, by example, and by, pre, and by precept, what is how to come to the stage of perfection. Therefore, where do we find that? Where can you find that? I mean, there are a lot of opportunities and availabilities of various types of spiritual processes. But to come to the stage of perfection, it's very difficult to find. And perfection is what we, what we require, because if we don't come to the stage of fulfilling our desires perfectly and completely, we don't, we continue to seek that perfection until it's actually there. And this is the mercy of Srila Prabhupada. So he's come to this Western world on the instructions of the Lord and his spiritual master coming into the line of disciplic succession. And Prabhupada, when he came, he wrote books, opened temples, taught people to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And through that simple and sublime process, this ISKCON society is, has been established in a very powerful way worldwide. Because people are looking for something genuine. <laughs> something genuine. Something that stays with you and it always gets better. Can you find something in this world that is, we can find something that is attractive, 
but something that stays with us and continues to increase in its, what we say, experience of both knowledge, happiness, and gradually de reducing the miseries of this material world. Very difficult to confine. Fine, but this is what Srila Prabhupada is giving us. And so we are like, uh, we are fortunate to have this opportunity. I think His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj will explain this point in more detail. But I'm just giving a sort of a summary of what Prabhupada is more or less presenting. And his mission was the mission of the Lord. He came not on his own for his own personal prestige, his own, uh, what we say, gain in any form. He came as a missionary. He came as a service to his spiritual master and to the previous spiritual master and to the Lord himself. And that's one of the reasons why Krishna consciousness is spreading because it was done in a selfless manner. When there is personal motivation that tinges the results of the activities and the activities are less than desirable. But Prabhupada was selfless. Selfless in the sense that he only wanted to give Krishna consciousness to others. And giving Krishna consciousness to others is really what the Lord, the heart of the Lord. We might speak about what is the heart of the Lord. The heart of the Lord is the Lord wants everyone to come back to him in loving devotional service. So knowing the heart of the Lord and experiencing that in his own life, he brought that selfless mood of devotion to the world through the form of chanting the holy names, Krishna Prashadam, <laughs> wonderful philosophy, and association with others who are doing the same thing. And this is the, this is the beauty of Srila Prabhupada's contribution to the world. And, it's always, it's, and because, and this is, the, this, is the most, this is the thing where you can really understand Prabhupada's um, uh, quality, when a great soul leaves, generally things go down. <laughs> and that's the way it is. Usually the, the followers are struggling to keep whatever the spiritual. But Prabhupada's movement is always expanding. That means he planted a seed that was, not, that was so powerful that it perpetuated itself by his selfless service and by his, what we say, direction. He's still directing us within the hearts of his devotees and through the activities of devotional service. So, I just wanted to mention a few things about Srila Prabhupada. I'm sure His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj will also uh, give us a deeper and more powerful understanding of Prabhupada's appearance in our life. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> Gyanantimidandasya Gyananjana chalakaya Chakshurun militam jena Tasmai sri gurave namaha Nama om Vishnu padaya Krishna pristaya bhutale Srimathe Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine 
निर्विशेषाशून्यवादी अस्तत्यतेश्चारिने बंशकल्पतरुप्यस्च कृपासिंदुप्य एवच्च पतितानाम बाबनिप्यो वैष्णवेप्यो नमो नमः श्रीकृष्णा चैतन्या प्रभु नित्यानंदा श्री अद्वैता कदाधार श्रीवासदी गौर भक्त ब्रिंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरि हरि हरे कृष्णा I am very grateful to be with you today a special thanks to his holiness chandramali swami maharaj wonderful expressions of appreciation for shila prabhupa her grace lakshmi moni devi for presiding with her divine presence and to all of you thank you very much i am just on my way Calcutta actually Kolkata <laughs> where there will be a very special ceremony on August 13th to commemorate Srila Prabhupada's boarding the cargo ship Jaladuta 50 years ago to bring this great message of pure devotional service to the western world Chandramali Maharaj has explained the various um quotations from scriptures and great acharyas who could foresee what Srila Prabhupada was going to do as an offering to the lord in the bhagavad gita krishna tells paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chaduskritam dharma samstapanara paya sambhavami juge juge that the one absolute truth the supreme personality of godhead descends into this material world again and again for the purpose of extending his compassion upon all living beings to protect the pious to reestablish the principles of religions to annihilate the miscreants The Gita tells a hum bija pratapi tha. Krishna says, "I am the father, the mother of all living beings. Everyone is Krishna's children, and even in this world, um, a mother and father who loves their child." does not give up on their child is always there to extend their help krishna and shri radha the supreme mother and father of the soul amai vam so jiva loke jiva buddha sanat krishna tells every living being is part and parcel of me as there are infinite sun rays emanating from the one sun planet 
नित्यो नित्यानाम चेतन चेतनानाम एको बहुनाम योगदाति कामान There are limitless living beings jivas or souls whose origin is the one god the all attractive one or krishna and the nature of each of these limitless souls is we are always dependent on the one supreme soul shri chaitanya mahaprabhu established his teachings on a very simple principle jivara swarupai krishna ranitya das we are all eternally the loving servants of the lord the nature of krishna is causeless limitless unconditional love for every living being and the nature of every living being is to love krishna but krishna never forgets but the living entity has the capacity to forget and this material existence is a facility for the forgetful souls to remember again the soul is eternal nahanyate hanyamane sarire it is never born and it never dies the soul is ananda it's full of happiness that ananda is in its love for krishna in experiencing krishna's love for us but due to the ahankar the false ego we identify with so many temporary designations regarding to the body and those things related to the body and since time that cannot be remembered we have been trying to find pleasure in those things but it's never enough it can never touch the soul any amount of wealth or pleasures of this world any amount of power or prestige Krishna tells in Gita dukha laya mashashvatam it's a place of misery this world because we're all subjected to birth old age disease and death and all the things we're trying to find our happiness in our temporary and are bound inevitably to disappoint us so in this condition Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Hriday Shyarjuna Tishtati Krishna is seated within our heart always. We can forget him, but Krishna never forgets us. We can abandon Krishna, but Krishna will never abandon us. He's always within our heart, waiting for us just to turn to him. But we forgot how to turn to him. were so distracted therefore krishna descends into this world again and again and again to reveal his beautiful pastimes his teachings and atan dharma remind us of who we are where we're coming from and where we really want to go every great religion is born of God's descent within this world to express his compassion to us Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself it is described in the Bhagavad Gita man mana bhava mad bhakto madhya jimnam namaskuru the essence of dharma is to always remember Krishna to never forget krishna to become krishna's devotee and to offer our hearts and krishna promises that we will come to him without fail if we just do that 
Srila Prabhupada explained that Krishna spoke it. But in this age of Kali Yuga, it's very rare for people to actually understand how to apply it. So Krishna appears again within this age of Kali as Lord Chaitanya, especially to teach by his example how to follow these principles, how to live as a devotee, how to always remember Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya extracted from the Vedic literatures this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which the Kali Santarana Upanishad declares as the perfect medicine for this particular time to awaken our ecstatic love for Krishna. Kali Kale Namarupe Krishna Vata. And Lord Chaitanya was personally tasting the sweetness of love for Krishna and distributing it. And then, at one time when he was in Varanasi, he said that I'm like a gardener and I have all these fruits of prema bhakti, love of God. I have so many fruits, limitless. How many can my two hands distribute? Whoever is my devotee, I am asking, help me to distribute these fruits. And he declares, that person will be most dear to me. In 1922, Srila Prabhupada first met his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And on their first meeting, his Guru Maharaj told him, before there was even an introduction between them, you are an intelligent young person. You should take the message of Lord Chaitanya and spread it throughout the world in the English language. That was like a seed that entered so deeply into Srila Prabhupada's heart. Srila Prabhupada was born in Kolkata. His mother and father were very great devotees of Krishna. He would wake up every morning to the Mangalarti of Sri Radha Govinda and hear the bell and the chanting. His whole life, he was always with Krishna in every way. And now he's being given the order to take this message of Krishna and the names of Krishna to the whole world. At the time he was already just married and he had a child. And in Calcutta in those days, it wasn't easy to make a living. So Srila Prabhupada was very responsible in his household life. But at the same time, he was always so eager in every possible way he could to assist this message of love for God, his guru's mission. And at a certain point in his life, when his family was grown, he retired to make his residence in Vrindavan. Most people go to Vrindavan to retire, to stay there until they die. But Srila Prabhupada went, even at a rather old age, to actually prepare for his mission. And he did. He lived in the small rooms of the Sri Radha Damodar temple just near the, the Samadhi of Sri Rupa Goswami and Jiva Goswami. And there he was translating and writing purports to the Srimad Bhagavatam. When the first 
canto was completed and published, he went to Mumbai, where he was giving lectures. He was actually going all over the city giving talks. But his special purpose was he was approaching Sumati Murarji, who was the owner of a large cargo ship company. And she was a great devotee of Krishna in the Pushti Marg, Srinathji. And he requested her, give me free passage to America. I want to spread the message of Krishna. Sumati Murarji refused. She said, you are a very old man. At the time he was 69 years old. She said, America is a very cold place. And people are very materialistic. And they do so many things you cannot imagine. You should not go there. You're too old. No one will listen to you. If you go, you will surely die. But Srila Prabhupada persisted. But she also persisted. She said, I cannot take responsibility for this. I will not give you this passage. Now, for most of us, that would have been a good excuse to go back to Vrindavan, <laughs> where it, his life was very, com it was very simple, but it was very comfortable. Now, in 1965, Vrindavan was very simple, quiet place. Today it's not, at least externally, so quiet. Even when I first went there in 1971, there was practically never, ever, ever any car coming into Vrindavan. It was practically unheard of. People would every now and then come in on a little horse-drawn carriage or a rickshaw, or a walk. There was a little town surrounded by a huge, beautiful forest, and the Yamuna River was flowing so forcefully. That was Vrindavan. There was practically no commercialism. It was just a very, very pure place of pilgrimage with saints living, and others too. Srila Prabhupada was there. He had so many friends who were all great, great devotees of the Lord. He could have gone back, but instead he sat on the steps of Sumati Murarji because he was very, um, he was very much having a plan. He knew that such a cultured, devoted lady as this, if he was sitting at her steps around lunchtime, she would invite him for prasad. <laughs> and in a cultured society in India at the time, it was a very special thing to invite sadhus for prasad. And if they didn't accept, it was really unlucky. So she sent her secretary, please come in, have prasad. Prabhupada said, I am fasting till I get my ticket. <laughs> so he wouldn't move. And he was there for hours. So finally, she said, Swamiji, here is your passage. Why did he do that? Because he was so deeply connected with loving devotion to Krishna and his Guru Maharaj. He understood Krishna's compassion for all living beings everywhere. And he wanted to assist Lord Chaitanya by distributing these fruits of love of God all over the world. 
It was simply based on compassion, on love for you and me, people he physically didn't even know, but he knew our souls and he felt for our souls. He took a train, I think it was a mail train, M-A-I-L, <laughs> which are the slowest trains in India. And ultimately, after a couple days of riding on a train, he reached Calcutta. He went to Mayapur Tom to the samadhi, or the sacred tomb, of his Guru Maharaj, who had given him this order about 43 years before. And he prayed for mercy. He prayed for blessings. He prayed for the blessings of his Guru Maharaj, all the acharyas of our parampara, and Lord Chaitanya in Hidden Nityananda Prabhu. And then there's a beautiful story. He stopped in Shantipur to the house of Sri Adwaita Prabhu. Sri Adwaita Prabhu was the person who fasted for a long time and cried very loudly the names of Krishna practically day and night begging Krishna to appear in this world. And it was based on the cries and the compassion for all living beings in the heart of Sri Adwaita that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended. Lord Chaitanya, or Srila Prabhupada, went to Adwaita Bhavan. He had gone there many times over the years to pray for blessings. But this time he was about to leave India for this purpose. And he told the Pujari at that temple when he was asked, what are you doing? He said, my Guru Maharaj has given me an impossible mission to do something no one has ever attempted to do like this, to spread Lord Chaitanya's message and Krishna's message all over the world. and I've come to pray for blessings. It was there in Calcutta. He told people about his purpose, but literally nobody thought it was possible. He had so many God brothers and God sisters, no one paid attention. It was just an impossible thing. Much earlier in the 1920s and 30s, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur sent his most accomplished, educated, well-organized leaders to London. But they couldn't do much of anything. So how would anyone else be able to do it? And they were funded. Srila Prabhupada had nothing and no one was willing to fund him because it was impossible. On Friday the 13th of August 1965, his youngest son, Vrindavan Chandra Day, picked him up in a taxi cab to drive him to the King George dockyards where the ship was going to depart. And there were only about two other people that came, a Mr. Ali, the Darwin of the, skin, of, the, of, the, of the boats, the cargo ship company, uh, Mr. Gupta, Mr. Sane, something Mr. Sane. There were four people, 
Three of them were there for professional reasons for the cargo ship, and one was his youngest son. And they said goodbye to him. And it was on that day that he climbed the steps to this cargo ship, and the Jaladuta departed. In Srila Prabhupada's diary, we find close to the beginning of his journey in the Arabian Sea, he had two heart attacks. There were no hospitals or doctors or medical facilities on that boat. He had severe seasickness. From the Arabian Sea, through the Suez Canal and the Persian Gulf, the ship went uh, through Asia, the Middle East, Europe. On one side was Africa, and then came to the Atlantic Ocean. And he crossed the Atlantic Ocean. Altogether, it took about 38 days. And when he was just outside the Boston Harbor, after this very long journey, on his journey in his diary, he was writing, I am remembering my beloved deities of Radha Damodar, Radha Govinda, Radha Madan Mohan, and the holy land of Vrindavan, and how much I miss them. But I am going to the West on the order of my Guru Maharaj to fulfill Lord Chaitanya's desire, so far away from Vrindavan. And when he approached the Boston Harbor, he wrote a beautiful prayer to Krishna, where he revealed his heart. Years later, that prayer happened to be found in a trunk by one of his disciples. Therein, he's praying to Krishna that I don't think these people are going to understand my language. He never met an American in his life. He never left India in his life. How will they understand? These people are so much overcome by the modes of passion and ignorance. Krishna, only if you give me the words to speak will they understand your message. That was his mood. Not my message, but Krishna, it's your message. And only if you empower me is it possible. Let me be your puppet and let me dance as you want me to dance. And he signed your insignificant beggar, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. When Srila Prabhupada arrived in New York City, he told our dear God-brother Brahmananda Prabhu, who we offer our deepest gratitude and prayers for his immortal soul. That when I was coming off the plank of the boat, I was looking right and looking left, and I didn't know where to go. Srila Prabhupada had no money. He had 40 rupees, which was worthless in America, equal to about $7. He didn't know anyone. But he said, I felt completely confident because I had the Srimad Bhagavatam and I had the holy name of Krishna, and I had the blessings of my guru. Srila Prabhupada was picked up by a stranger and put on a Greyhound bus, 
and shipped off to Butler, Pennsylvania, where he was being sponsored by a stranger. Sally Agarwal was an American lady. She lived in Pennsylvania. She was young, somehow or other. Actually, Srila Prabhupada tells the story that about a year before, he was giving a talk in Agra. And the person who he, he was speaking at this person's house, and the person said, please pray for my son. He said, my son, I sent him to America to study engineering, and he was captured by an American woman. <laughs> and now he's married, and he refuses to come back to India. Please pray for him. And Srila Prabhupada said, oh, could she give me a visa to America? <laughs> the person was shocked he said that. He didn't say anything. And then a couple months later, when Srila Prabhupada was in Vrindavan, he got a notice from the American embassy that you've been sponsored and approved for a visa for America. Sally Agarwal told later that my father always was asking us to sponsor different people, for business purposes mostly. But nobody ever came, and we knew nobody would ever come. And then she got a telegram from this A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami that he's arriving. <laughs> she called her husband, what are we going to do? He's, a, he's actually coming. This person's actually coming. He's coming to our house. He didn't know. <laughs> so they just called Traveler's Aid and have somebody pick him up and, and Gopal Agarwal came to the bus station in Pittsburgh and picked him up and drove him up to Butler. And Sally saw him in his saffron robes. This is 1965, September. Please understand, nobody ever saw swamis in America before, especially Butler, Pennsylvania. How many of you have been to Butler, Pennsylvania? I never heard of Butler, Pennsylvania. <laughs> How many of you have ever heard of Butler, Pennsylvania before you met devotees? It was the place that the Jeep was invented. But nobody really cares too much about that. So, it's a small town. And Sally Agarwal, when she saw Swamiji, which his name was then, she was thinking, everybody in the town is going to be asking me, who is this person, what's he doing here? So she was just really in anxiety about it all. She didn't want to be just talking about all this because she didn't know how to deal with it. So she called the newspaper to have an interview with him and do a story about him. And then everybody would know and nobody would ask her anything. <laughs> she said that was her motive. It wasn't to make him famous. It was just so that she wouldn't have to answer questions anymore. And they put him in the YMCA hotel. Simple little room. And he would walk every day from the YMCA hotel about a half a mile or so to come to the little house. It wasn't even a house, it was just a row of so many houses. I, was, I saw it. It's just a big row and then in the row there's many doors and each door is a little house. And that's where they lived. And Prabhupada would come and he would cook. And when he first came, he opened the refrigerator and he saw all sorts of meat and fish and chicken and eggs and all that kind of stuff. And he never had to deal with that in 
Brindavan <laughs> or in his house in Calcutta, Vaishnav house. Srila Prabhupada's wife was actually a very great devotee. So what happened was Srila Prabhupada didn't say anything because he was a guest. But he cooked and he said, can I cook for you tonight? And he made a really wonderful feast for the whole family. And they really liked it. They never ate anything, like, especially Gopal. It was the only Indian, because there was no Indian restaurants in America in those days. And his wife, Sally, didn't know how to do that. So he was eating chapatis and sabjis and halava and kheer and all these nice things, pakoras and samosas, and they were, the family was really happy. And Prabhupada said, I will cook for you every day. And they understood and they emptied the refrigerator of all the other stuff and just... <laughs> so from the beginning, Srila Prabhupada understood that paramdristva nivartate, that giving people a higher experience can empower them to overcome their lower tendencies. And Srila Prabhupada he understood he was going to be going to New York. But Sally was the first American he ever really met. So he was, Prabhupada said you can take one drop from the ocean and understand the whole ocean qualitatively from that drop. So he was studying the whole psychiatry, psychology, sociology of America in Sally Agarwal. And she loved him like her own father. He was so kind. He was so gracious. He was so wise. And he was so curious to know so many things. Please understand, coming from Vrindavan in India in 1965, it was one day he was just sitting in the house and he heard <laughs> what is that? And he looked and Sally had a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> what is that? That was high technology in those days. She said, this is how we clean our carpets. And Prabhupada said, you know, he's, What's a, what a waste of time. You know, <laughs> Why don't you just sweep it? <laughs> This is America, you need a machine just to clean your floor? <laughs> and she loves to tell the story when he would go into the bathroom for a long time and there would be all kinds of water coming out, of the, out from under the door and soak her carpet and she was afraid to ask him, what's going on in there? And one day she said, Swamiji, why is there so much water coming out of the bathroom? He said, what? He said, what are you doing there? He said, I'm taking my bath. She said, well, how do you take your bath? And he just showed. And I lived in Vrindavan. This is exactly the way they do it in Vrindavan. They have, a, they fill a tank of water with well water and then they stand outside the tank and have a little cup called a lota and they pour it on side. So he was standing outside the bathtub and filling the bathtub and going like this. All the water was coming through the floor and into the living room and on the carpet and everything. And he thought that's the way everyone does it. She said, Swamiji, that's not how we do it in America. He said, how do you do it? She said, we do it, we stand inside the bathtub. <laughs> and he considered that so uncivilized. He said, you'd go inside the bathtub where the water is? She said, yes. <laughs> and then another day she, she saw, oh, this is after he already learned how to go inside the bathtub. She, she, she heard the... <laughs> What's going on 
in my bathroom. She said, what are you doing, Swamiji? He said, I'm washing my clothes. <laughs> because in India, you've seen, you know, they take their clothes and they get it all wet and then they beat it and beat it. <laughs> and he was beating it on the floor and putting more water on it and beating it and hitting it. She said, that's not how we do it in America. He said, well, how do you do it? And she took, she took him to a laundromat. And he saw this washing machine. And he saw these drying machines going. And there's all these people. He was, he was quite amazed. And the butler, Eagle, they ran this beautiful article about Srila Prabhupada, which I just explained why. And le nearby there was a college called Slippery Rock State University. How many of you have attended Slippery Rock College? <laughs> it's actually, if you go up the interstate today, you'll see a sign saying Slippery Rock State College and it's exit 108. But there was a professor named Larson who was a philosophy and religion professor and he saw the Butler Eagle and he thought this is really amazing. There's a Swamiji from India so close by in Butler, Pennsylvania. It was just a few minutes drive. He called Sally Agarwal and said, could, I, could he come to speak in my class? So some years later, I went there and I spoke in the classes of Professor Larson. And he told me about his experience with Prabhupada. Would you like to hear it? He said, Swamiji, he said, I went, I drove up in my car to a corner of the downtown, little tiny downtown of Butler, Pennsylvania, and I picked him up. He was waiting at the corner for me. He was holding an umbrella. <laughs> and, and I took him down, and he spoke at my classes, and, 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 between, and he spoke at Professor Sharma's classes, and between the classes, we just sat in the lawn and talked. And I said, can you take me to that place? And he took me. To, and the place they sat, it looked just like a Vyasa san. It was quite amazing, like no other seat I've seen in a little park. It was really nice. And I said, what did he talk about? He said, we mostly talked about trees. <laughs> he said, what kind of tree is this? And the person said, this is an oak tree. He said, what kind of fruits does it give? He said, it doesn't give fruits. <laughs> so what kind of tree is this? This is an elm tree. What kind of fruit doesn't give fruits? Prabhupada never saw oak trees or elm trees or ever, maple trees. They don't grow in India. And he was just discussing all the different trees in the campus green. And then Srila Prabhupada started telling him about the trees in India. And then started telling about, about Krishna and the trees. <laughs> so Professor Larson said he was so nice. He just got me involved in the conversation so intimately and so interestingly and we became such good friends and then somehow we made a little link to Krishna. He said he was just a perfect gentleman. And he asked me, what has he done since then? Somebody had already interviewed him, but they didn't really tell him too much. And when I explained all the temples and all the devotees and all the projects and all the books, Professor Larson was speechless. He said, I can't imagine. He said, it must have been other people who did all this. I said, no, Prabhupada was the inspiration behind everything. And he just his eyes filled with tears. 
He said he was such a humble, meek, kind person. I knew he was a saint. He was so compassionate. He was so friendly. But I never could imagine that he could do what he has done. After several weeks, Srila Prabhupada told Sally and Gopal Agarwal he wanted to go to New York City. And they were so worried about him. Because now he was 70 years old and he didn't know anybody and he was so new to America and they just loved him more than they even loved their own fathers. And Sally gave Prabhupada a whole bag of change because in those days there wasn't cell phones and there was only pay phones. She gave him change so he could wash his clothes in the laundromat. <laughs> and he could make a phone call to them if there was some difficulty. And she was so scared when they brought him to the bus station. And there he was in New York City. What time am I supposed to end? Now? I'll end soon because Srila Prabhupada in he met a, a Dr. Mishra who was a yoga teacher and he gave him some chance to give some kirtans and talks in his classes Yes, yes. <laughs> I will try to be obedient to you. <laughs> so I'll skip what I was just going to say. <laughs> but at a certain point he was in the Bowery, which was then a ghetto in New York. And any possibility, any chance to tell anyone about Krishna or expose them to the holy names or taste prasad, Srila Prabhupada was so eager, so anxious. He was writing back to his god brothers, please, let's do something together here. I found a person who's letting us use his little flat and we can make a temple here but no one would help, except for maybe sending some cartels <laughs> or a murdanga, because nobody thought it was possible. Srila Prabhupada was in a poverty state. He was living in a skid row. There were attempts to attack him to kill him. Whatever little he had was stolen. But he wasn't discouraged. He would walk down Fifth Avenue, one of the wealthiest, most famous streets in the world. And he would see the limousines and the big, beautiful, multi-million dollar houses and apartments. And he was coming down from the Bowery where he was living with people who were practically or literally homeless. He was seeing it all. But he saw it all with compassion. Because once you taste the sweetness of Krishna, of bhakti, of love for God, and everything in this material world, you see it for what it is. It can never bring happiness, and ultimately it brings sorrow. Srila Prabhupada had tears of pity in his eyes when he was seeing both the homeless and the Bowery and the millionaires and billionaires 
on Fifth Avenue. He didn't see a difference. He saw different degrees of spiritual poverty and he felt such a deep passion of compassion to help them, to give them Krishna. And he was tested in every possible way and nobody even bothered to help him because they thought it's impossible. But his compassion for everyone for all of us was so deep he wouldn't give up. And about a year later in 1966 he got a little storefront after he was kicked out of a place because the person went crazy who he was with. Some sympathizers got him a little tiny storefront. 26th Second Avenue. He said, we can pay the first month's rent, but we don't know if we can afford the second month's. And it was in that little place that Srila Prabhupada started giving Bhagavad Gita classes. He started going to Tompkins Square Park under an elm tree and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And he had a vision that because it wasn't about him, it was about Krishna, that this mission would spread all over the world. And it did. From New York to San Francisco to Montreal to Santa Fe, New Mexico, ultimately to London, and then it spread throughout Europe, throughout America, throughout South America, then Srila Prabhupada went back to India, and it spread throughout India. Australia. Srila Prabhupada went to Russia for just a few days during the time of the Iron Curtain of the Communist regime and Prabhupada met one person and preached to him so deeply that one person created a, rev a spiritual revolution for the whole of Russia. One person's desire to help us one person's compassion has affected so many tens and millions of people's lives. Just a few days ago, I was in the San Francisco area at an international Bhagavad Gita conference. And some very famous sages and rishis from India were on the stage. And Tulsi Gabbard, who is the, or Gabbard, who is the congresswoman from Hawaii was there. And I was also to speak. And it was incredible. Tulsi, who was a congresswoman, very, very powerful, very wonderful lady. She was, the keynote speaker, and she began her talk by explaining that everything she knows about Prabhupada and the very foundational basis of her whole spiritual life was due to the divine grace of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And she quoted, and she told the whole story of him being on the Jaladutta. She praised him with such emotion. And then she gave a beautiful, beautiful explanation of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita, right from Srila Prabhupada's books. When it was my turn to speak, I spoke something from the Gita. And I explained Prabhupada came over again. He was typing it in the Bowery and his typewriter was stolen. So many difficulties from such a small situation. I said, but from that day, the Bhagavad Gita alone, of all Prabhupada's books, the Bhagavad Gita has sold over 40 million copies throughout the world of Srila Prabhupada's books. <laughs> And in San Francisco, they clapped much louder than you.
to you, Nityananda Pran Prabhu, for giving me this chance to speak. Thank all of you. Srila Prabhupada Ki It is, it is a time to be grateful. Gratitude is, a, is like a fertilizer that softens and nourishes the heart for the seed of bhakti to grow. When we water it with the holy names and the association of devotees. And we can show our gratitude to Srila Prabhupada. in a very simple way. He, he told us, just wholeheartedly accept what I'm giving you and share it with others. And he also told, you can show your love for me by how you cooperate. For this great mission. Thank you very much.
Capucci, Nathan Garland, and you're going to keep it. No one, thank you very much.